So Deezer and the team at Deezer have made a new tool available, which is simply put really impressive. It's called Spleeter. And what it lets you do is isolate tracks from a compiled audio source. So in a traditional song, it lets you isolate the vocals from the instrumentation or split it out into four or five parts of that track. Three quick disclaimers before we start. One, obviously I didn't create this. A huge round of applause to the team at Deezer for putting this out and making the actual software open source so that people like me can download it and play around with it. Two, I don't pretend to understand everything that's going on internally with Spleeter. I have just enough technical knowledge to know how to get this thing set up and running on my own computer. So that's my only intent in giving you this tutorial. And then three, uh, Spleeter is obviously a very powerful tool. And when you can isolate things from different audio sources, it might lend itself to something like copyright infringement. So just a reminder to be mindful of different copyright laws and regulations and guidelines uh, with however you choose to use Spleeter as a tool. So with that being said, let's dive into uh, how to actually use this thing. Now, in terms of actually installing Spleeter, I'm not gonna guide you through the installation process per se. I will just point at the documentation that Deezer has made available on their GitHub repository. I think generally speaking, this is a very well documented guide to installing. And even if it might be a little bit daunting, the actual setup process is fairly easy. All you need to do is run a few things from the terminal and utilize something like Git or Homebrew to make sure that you have all the dependencies installed. Also, if you're looking to troubleshoot any problems, I would say hit the GitHub repository, hit the issues tab where they have a few good conversations about some of the common things that early users have run into. And generally, don't shy away from Googling things if you don't understand uh, how to install something on your computer. What we are going to be working off of today is the Getting Started page, which is also on Deezer's uh, Spleeter repository in the Wiki tab. And we're just going to be running some of these base commands using uh, Spleeter's preset models that come with it to generate some initial looks at what's possible with the tool. Once you've installed Spleeter on your computer, uh, into a directory of your choosing, you're going to want to navigate to the actual Spleeter directory. Now, one thing that I ran into when I installed this, aside from uh, it taking a few minutes to set up all the necessary dependencies, is you want to be in the Spleeter subdirectory of the main directory when you're actually running the tool. So we're going to start out, we're going to navigate to the Spleeter subdirectory within the Spleeter master directory. The first thing you're going to want to do is make sure that you have Conda running. So we're just going to make sure that Conda is running. We're going to Conda activate. Spleeter, and we're going to be running it on a CPU instead of the GPU environment. So Conda is now running. Uh, what we're going to do now is actively use Spleeter. It's a one command tool, which makes it amazing in terms of how easy it is to actually use once you have it installed. So we're going to type Spleeter, and we're going to type separate correctly. Then we're going to give it an input with the flag dash I. Navigate to the path of the audio file we want to use. The first one we're going to be looking at is up here on the desktop. It's going to be Poison, which is just one of my own songs, again, to make sure that we don't get copyrighted. Uh, so we're going to go Desktop and name it the file. And now we're going to declare an output path for Spleeter. So in the exact same way, we're just going to tell Spleeter where we want it to put all of the individual audio tracks. Uh, if you don't declare how many audio tracks you want Spleeter to sp split things into, it will do two by default. So we're just not going to declare anything now. We'll do that a little bit later. Uh, so we're going to go Output. So dash O, and again, we're gonna throw it out on the desktop, and we're just gonna let it create a directory on the desktop. So this will run Spleeter. One of the things you will see on the first time you run this is you'll see it download a preset or pre-trained models. And from my understanding, all that's doing is pulling in the models that it uses to evaluate the audio source and actually isolate it uh, from you know all of the technology that Spleeter is running on, that deep learning technology. So. Don't worry if you see a prompt that is a little bit different from mine. I've already run it on my computer, so it's already able to access those models and use them to actually split the tracks into their individual parts. So while this is running, let's take a quick listen to the actual audio file that we are splitting right now to give you an idea of kind of the before and after split to test for quality. So let's give this a listen. Okay, so my only point there is that, you know, we've got clearly an instrumental and we've got clearly a vocal. 
and we want to see how well Spweeter is going to split those. So Spweeter has outputted our new directory onto our desktop. And if we look inside this directory, we've now got two WAV files. And let's test and see how well Spweeter has actually isolated the instrumentation or the accompaniment and the vocals. Now there are normally vocals playing at this time. So this is actually pretty well isolated. Okay, so I think that gives you a pretty good example of maybe how powerful Splitter is. It definitely has bits and pieces of artifacting that happen and there's only so much uh, quality and kind of granularity you can get out of a combined audio file. But looking at how quickly it did that and looking at the fact that that instrumentation and that vocal sit very closely together, I would say that's a pretty high quality isolation, especially for something that took 45 seconds to run. So now let's take a look at uh, some other uses of Splitter that I've kind of been playing around with today. One of which is isolating vocals from background noise. So as far as I know, there's not too much tooling that exists for this already. There is definitely some, but it I think it's very expensive and I can't remember the name of it, but uh, there is a piece of software I know that is, I think made by Isotope that isolates background noise out, and I recall it being very pricey. So let's see how, how, uh, how well we can isolate uh, background noise or eliminate background noise for free with Splitter. So we have our second file here, and you have a human voice or a, a semi-human voice in the countdown from the, uh, like the stop, uh, the crosswalk voice, and then you have street noise like cars, etc. So let's take a listen to the source file. 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, Okay, 13. so you've got very clear vo uh, vocals in the front, and then you've got kind of cars passing in the background and a little bit less clean of a signal. So using the same one command, let's now see how Spweeter handles this. So we're going to access our test countdown instead of our poison track. So we're just going to go in and we're going to change the name of the file that we're inputting, and we're going to let Spweeter throw it out on the desktop in its own new directory. And for this one, uh, just to show you that we can add in an additional argument, we're gonna add a flag for uh, P, so this is actually processing, and we're gonna say splitter colon, and then we're gonna say two stems. And again, this is the default action, but this would be where you would put something like four stems or five stems if you wanted splitter to try and isolate more instruments or more uh, components of the song. So let's see how it does. Okay, so this one has run a little bit more quickly. So now we've got our new test countdown uh, directory on the desktop. And opening it up, we have the same output, two files. Uh, we've got vocals, which is what Splitter identified as the vocal output, and then the accompaniment, which in this case is gonna be the background noise. So let's first take a look at the vocals and see how well it's isolated that sound. 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. So, Pretty good isolation. I mean, you might get some phasing and kind of a, a sucking sound uh, at the at the front and on, on the tail of the audio. But in terms of being able to hear the cars, if you were to play me that without any context of where it, it came from, uh, I would not be able to tell you that there were cars in the background of that audio. Now, uh, let's run Splitter one more time on something that's a little bit more nuanced. Uh, it's going to be a speech uh, with a pretty loud uh, static sound in the background. And again, we're going to see how well Deezer or Splitter can isolate the actual sound outside of the vocal. I can conceive of a national destiny which meets the responsibilities of today and measures up to the possibilities of tomorrow. Okay, so pretty discernibly you have a very loud static like vinyl crackle or a tape crackle and then the vocal which is actually the speech. So again, we're going to add, we're going to run the exact same uh, command, just with a uh, different, different file input. And we're going to tell it two stems again, because we're only really trying to isolate the vocal, everything else we don't care about. We're going to let Splitter run. So Splitter is finished running one more time, and it's thrown out a last, uh, another directory on our desktop. So let's just quickly move these over so we know what we're looking at. We've got our test speech. Again, remember that, that loud crackle in the background. So we open it up and let's see how well it did the vocals. 
I can conceive of a national destiny which meets the responsibilities of today and measures up to the possibilities of tomorrow. Behold a republic. So I think that speaks volumes to how powerful this tool is. Uh, again, you can hear some of the artifacts, but they're mainly over the vocal. Spleter has managed to isolate out that crackle, which, you know, sometimes it's added in for effect. But again, having that granular control and being able to separate the two introduces a lot of opportunity for different creativity. So one final thing I want to do before we wrap this up is just show, uh, let's listen to it in context and let's see how well these stems sound when you put them back together. So we're just going to open up Logic here and very simply, uh, let's go back to our first track and add in both of the stems and see how well uh, we've kind of avoided any additional artifacts getting added into the sound uh, and, and how well we can kind of recreate the original song or the original audio using the stems. So we're going to listen to uh, the original, and then we're going to listen to it in Logic. So on the side here, we're going to play the original. And now we're going to listen to the splitter split tracks put together and played at the same time. Through my veins, conjured images of all the things I think I'd like to do to you. Now. So, pretty good. I mean, almost indiscernible. I think there is a, a small bit of audio quality difference that I notice, uh, but I'm not sure how much of that is just, you know, the fact that this might be overloading a little bit, uh, maybe slightly louder than the original source because there's no master bus uh, put together. But Again, playing around with, with Sweeter today, I think one of the coolest things about it is that now having these stems, let's say I don't have access to the original file, now I can start playing with this in a way that you maybe couldn't with a traditional master, right? So just uh, let's play around with it while it's playing. So we're going to duplicate the vocals, for example. just the instrumentation and it lets you do cool things like adding reverb to just the vocal right all the granular control you would have with a traditional track out uh, you can now have even if you don't have the track outs So in terms of the power of Sweeter moving forward, one of the things that's really impressive to me is one, how quickly this tool runs. Uh, the fact that I can you know, demonstrate this in near real time in a tutorial is pretty impressive. Obviously the technology behind it is remarkable and amazing and I can't wait to see how it evolves. But also looking to the future, we can kind of see how powerful this might be if you can do things like track out separation in real time on things like songs, right? Let's say you are a DJ and you want to mix in stems of a song or have control over that. If something like Splitter was able to run in unison with your software, that gives you a new layer of depth that you can play with as a creator. In a similar way, if you have a stem or uh, a set of track outs that you want to manipulate as a producer, it gives you that additional layer of control or depth that you can then explode tracks out into their individual pieces. And obviously there's going to be tons of other ways that you can play with the software that haven't really even been explored yet. So again, I mean, Deezer, excellent job on this. Uh, I'm going to be playing with this for uh, days or weeks to come. And I'm really, really eager to see how everybody else uh, utilizes this software moving forward and builds on it to create you know, just amazing, amazing stuff. Uh, I will leave the links to Deezer's page where they announced the software, as well as links to their GitHub and instructions on how to get it set up, as well as a few other articles that I found that give good how-tos and troubleshooting tips so that you can hopefully get uh, Splitter set up on your own computer. Um, I am interested to hear what you guys think is going to be a big component of what's possible with something like this. So go ahead and make sure to leave that in the comments as well as like this video if you've enjoyed it and send it to somebody if you think they'd find it interesting. As a final announcement, 
uh, things like Sweeter and other news at the intersection of media and tech and music are things that I cover in my weekly newsletter, Lions Weekly. So if you're interested in getting a weekly digest of some of the most interesting things happening in music, tech, and media, head over to jameson-lion.com slash newsletter to sign up for that. Take a look at the most recent issue and see if it'd be something that you'd be interested in. Thank you guys. Hopefully you found this useful and have fun playing around with Sweeter.